Hello and welcome back to my channel. Some of you might have seen some days ago I made a honey fragranced sugar scrub that looks a little bit like a honey um, jar and I thought it would be great to use some actual honey, some real honey, and add it in the soap recipe that I usually use. So that's really exciting. And to create the honeycomb look, I'm going to use a regular bubble wrap like the one you find in the store and I'm just cutting it to fit to the top of my mold. Of course you could also line your entire mold with this bubble wrap and then you would have the honeycomb look all around the soap. That would be interesting too. For me now what I'm aiming for is just the look on top so I'm just cutting it to fit my mold here and I'm gonna set this aside ready for use. So here is the lye water solution. It is quite cooled down. It is important when you use um, honey in your soap that you try to soap as cool as you can. So um, here is the lye water solution. I added some sodium lactate and I'm measuring the temperature now. You can see it is um, at 35 degrees Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit. And the oils are also at a very cool temperature. Make sure you always are about 10 degrees apart. And for that reason, I really recommend to use an infrared thermometer. And then I'm adding the lye water slowly to the oils here. And then I'm going to stick blend it just until light emulsion. I don't want to overdo it here since the honey contains sugar and um, I want to be really really sure that um, the soap remains fluid enough. It's now time to add our colorant to the soap at this point here and I'm using the Bloom Gold Mica from a company called You Make It Up. You will find it down in the description box if you are interested. It's a beige type of gold that I really love. And then I'm mixing it with the stick blender, making sure that everything is uh, well blended. Before adding our honey and our fragrance oil. Again, I don't want to overdo it here. And now moving on to the actual honey. Here is a fluid type of honey. I chose a fluid one because it is easier to incorporate in our batter. If you have a more solid type of honey, then you could just warm it up a little bit in the microwave before adding it. And I'm adding 30 grams, that's about an ounce because for my size here it's two and a half kilos or five pound that's enough you don't want to overdo it with the honey because it really will heat up your batter so in goes the honey and then i'm giving it a good mix with the spatula And then we add the fragrance oil, which is dark honey and tobacco from uh, Saint Perfect. It's an absolutely lovely fragrance. It's a very sweet, but um, also manly fragrance. So it's unisex and men really like it too. So it can be used for men and women. All right, so here you can see that the batter is starting to thicken up and I want to be sure that everything is really nicely blended, but also not overdo it and um, be really quick. Here is my Brambleberry five pound mold that has a slide bottom and a silicone liner inside. It's absolutely beautiful, makes unmolding so much easier. So I'm going to pour the entire soap. This is just a one color soap because since it has the honey inside, 
it will give some honey speckles, I believe. And I want to keep it really, really simple, also because you're never sure if your batter is thickening up, then maybe you cannot do all these design ideas that you have. So I just want to go with one simple color and, you know, just a honey color, the honeycomb look on top, and that's enough with a nice stamp that you will see in just a minute. So here we go, I just make sure that everything is in the mold before we are going to add our bubble wrap, aka honeycomb look tool. I like to scrape everything out of my pitcher for different reasons. One is, of course, you don't want to waste all these nice ingredients here that will become soap by tomorrow. Secondly, once you have to clean your dishes, you are happy, the less soap sticks to your sides. And here, just as a quick tip, uh, I never try to wash my dishes right after soaping. I let it sit for 24 hours and then it becomes soap. You soak it in water and um, in a couple of hours you're going to be able to clean it like a breeze. That's the second reason. And the third reason is because I simply like it. So maybe you can see here the soap is already starting to be really, really thick. So I'm going to grab my bubble wrap here and starting from one side, I am gently but firmly pushing the bubble wrap onto the soap, making sure that the soap penetrates into the little cavities here. Can you see? You want to, you want to be sure that this design will then show up once you peel it off. So I just continue to tap. And I can also feel that the soap is really getting very hot. You could put the loaf into a refrigerator if you have one to keep it from overheating. I didn't do it and it was fine for me, but just if you want to be sure, you can just pop it in the refrigerator. Okay, I'm making just sure that everything is really nicely inside the soap so that the design will really show up. And this is how it looks, close up. We're gonna leave it in the mold for 24 hours and then come back tomorrow for the unmolding. Okay, so it's the next day and look, this is how it turned out. I love the rustic look of this uh, honeycomb and the wood, these neutral colors. And now I'm gonna peel off slowly the bubble wrap and look, this looks so realistic and so cute. Such a satisfying moment as well to peel off this bubble wrap. So let's see now, the bubble wrap, of course, you, you will throw it away. You're not gonna use it for anything else, of course. And now taking out the soap, you can see here this bottom, slide bottom. You just slide it out and then you remove the wooden frame. I don't know if you really call it a frame. That's how I call it. And then you have the liner left. And you can see immediately if the silicone releases from the soap, then you're ready to unmold. So that's a good thing. If not, then you just leave it in a little more. That's not a problem. You don't want to ruin your soap. Just leave it in more if it needs to. That's totally okay. So I like this discoloration on top of the soap. Do you see it? And you can see these little speckles here. These are honey spots and um, it's not a problem. They are not doing any harm. It just looks like that and I really wanted to have this rustic kind of look. And here is the soap cutter. It's a handmade tool. It has guitar strings, you can see here. So you are able to cut through the soap like it would be cheese or something. And this makes the cutting so much easier. 
So I would absolutely recommend it to everyone that is making soap loaves to use such a tool. You also have a single uh, wire cutter, which is also great. I'm also thinking about getting one of those. And this is how the soap looks like. I think it's awesome with these little speckles. It gives really the rustic look of a organic kind of soap. Really love it. And then, yeah, I will leave a link down in the description box of where I got my cutter. It's, of course, uh, a company in Europe. It's a person in Germany who is handcrafting it, and it's really amazing. You can choose the width of your soap bars or of your wires. And um, I've never had any problems. If one string breaks, let's say, then you can just go in a guitar store, get an a E string, you know, the smallest string and then you replace it. Very, very simple. All right, so the first half is cut and now I'm just going through the wires with uh, some kitchen roll. Make sure that the next cut is really clean. And then I'm cutting the next block. So just um, as a quick remark about the guitar string, it is true, I had guitar strings sitting around, so for me it was easy to take them and just replace it. But of course, the same company also delivers strings that match your tool, of course. You don't have to, you know, go to a guitar shop, but you could, you know what I mean? The only difference is that you don't have to tune this one here. Okay, so I want to say that this fragrance oil here typically discolors a little bit the soap, so it, I expect it to get a little darker. I still hope that these um, speckles here will be visible, because I really like them. And now we are moving on to the actual stamping of the soap. So what I typically do is I start stamping on a small sample size soap, because then you gonna be sure that your stamping is okay. Sometimes the soap is a little bit too soft and you want to wait a little longer. Sometimes it is good. I'm just gonna turn you around here and see if you can see better from this angle. And yeah, so I typically let the soap sit for one, two hours just that the surface gets a little bit more harder before I start stamping. So I have my acrylic stamp here just gonna place it where I want to have it and then I take a rubber mallet and I just give a very light tap and making sure that the stamp is really sinking in into the soap and you will see that can you see it gets a little dark so then you just wiggle the stamp a little bit very very gently you don't want to tear the soap and there you go you have a nice impression I'm gonna do the exact same thing now on a real normal piece of soap, like a regular size soap, placing my stamp, then with the rubber mallet give it a light tap. Gently wiggling the stamp out and here we go. So I'm just going to continue and stamp all the remaining soaps it's exactly the same way. And then I'm going to let them cure for four to six weeks as per usual. So I hope you enjoyed this video and also hope to see you around very soon for another one and I wish you a wonderful day. Bye bye!